do tonight. The diary of Kathy Durst, a chilling discovery after her disappearance reveals the alleged abuse that she suffered daily during her marriage to accused killer Robert Durst. News 12 senior investigative reporter Tara Rosenblum brings us Kathy's story in her own words for the first time. Late May 76 found out Bob had an affair. Much trust had left our marriage by this time, but we still maintained a facade of a loving couple. These are the words of Kathy Durst. At age 29, the former model appeared to have it all. She had a smile that literally lit up the room. A medical student at the top of her class. That's their wedding day. Married to a real estate baron with multiple homes in Westchester and Manhattan. But you can't judge this book by its cover. He told me not to tell friends or family where I went to school. A few times I slipped and he became angry with me. Inside the faded and photocopied pages of this journal. During 1977 and 78. Years of turbulence. He slapped me. And alleged violence. He punched me and I fell to the ground. During Kathy's marriage to Robert Durst are exposed. We attended a meeting at an agency in White Plains. He told me how I should act and what to say. I disagreed and he threw a half gallon of water on my head, I felt humiliated and cried. Kathy's older sister, Virginia McKeon, reads her late sister's words for the first time aloud. In June of 80, air conditioner on the VW which I drive to school daily is broken. He refuses to fix it for $200, March of 76, abortion, unplanned pregnancy. At the time, I felt hopeless, helpless, sick to my stomach. I was depressed and saw a psychiatrist two to three times after the abortion. Was it hard for you to turn the page and read those, yeah. knowing that they were all the words that, that she didn't share when she was alive? Yeah, you know, the abortion. That would have been devastating for her, I think, really devastating for her. The journal, now one of the McCormick family's last physical connections to Kathy, shedding light on alleged abuse they never even knew was happening. I see you rubbing the pages. Mm. So it's Kathy's words, and I don't have many of her words, so. I could see her. I wish I had known. I want my sister back. We just want an answer. Mary was the sister closest to Kathy. They were best friends. She is still to this day, nearly four decades later, so devastated by her loss, she could not bring herself to go on camera. So you've never in 40 years done a television interview? No. No. But agreed to speak with us using only her voice. Mary is the one that found the journal a few months after Kathy disappeared back in 1982. It was tucked away in a bag of items Kathy brought to her home and told her to store in a safe spot. It was uh, just before Christmas and uh, she said to me, I want you to keep this. If anything happens to me, give it to the police. She was just so thin and just clinging to me. Mary says she pleaded with Kathy to leave Robert, but that Kathy refused. She said, oh, I'm going to get a divorce. I'm going to leave him, but I can't leave him now because she said I won't have the money. I said, well, we'll do as much as we can. And, um, and that was it. And that was the last time she would see her sister alive. One month after dropping off this journal at Mary's home, Kathy disappeared. You get the guilt. I mean, why wasn't I there for her, for heaven's sakes? You didn't hear about, you know, the abuse like you do now. Um, you know, people aren't as open. But her sisters say there is still one more chapter to write because while the book of Kathy's life will not have a happy ending. It's rough. They're praying it will have justice. Tara Rosenblum, News 12.